The Australian Window Association and the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage, through the Environmental Trust, present Australian Fenestration and Energy Efficiency, the Science and Maths. To be future-proof, to be competitive and to meet consumer demands, you need to understand the science behind energy and energy efficiency. This is especially important when needing to achieve the specified energy efficiency targets for a building envelope. The main elements in terms of energy performance for an array of building components that go into making a building energy efficient need to be recognised and considered. A key area that needs to be heavily focused on throughout the design and build stage is the windows and doors, as this is where most of the heating and cooling energy escapes, dramatically affecting thermal comfort. It doesn't matter whether a building is well insulated or poorly insulated, windows are the most vulnerable to energy loss, between 48 and 61 per cent, which emphasises the importance of selecting high performing fenestration products such as double glazed windows in the design stage. So let's look at the three main measures of energy performance for fenestration products. They are solar heat gain coefficient, also referred to as SHGC, U-value, visible transmittance. These three measures are of great importance when considering the design of a building to ensure both thermal comfort and energy performance. It's important to note that these are all for the whole of window system that is made up of the frame, glass, seals and any spaces. What is U-value? By definition, U-value is the measure of the rate of non-solar heat loss or gain through a material or assembly due to the differences in temperature or environmental conditions between the inside and outside of the window. The rate of heat transfer is indicated in terms of the U-value of window assembly, which includes the effect of the frame, glass, seals and any spaces. Simply put, it's a measure of thermal transmittance. So basically how well a window product prevents heat from escaping by factoring in the combination of conduction, radiation and convection. U-value is expressed in terms of watts per metre squared per degree Kelvin. The U-value for a window takes into account the various U-values for components making up the window. You can see these abbreviations in technical literature. UW is the value for whole window and the only acceptable measurement for use in energy rating programs and because of its importance is often simply abbreviated to U. UC is the value at the centre of glass. UF is the value for the frame. U value comes from a complex interaction between the frame and the glass. Glass or frame values alone cannot be used. U-value ratings generally fall between 2 and 10 watts per metre square Kelvin for Australian products. A lower U-value indicates a window's greater resistance to heat flow and so a better insulating performance. Regardless of which climate zone, hot or cold, or somewhere in between, the building is built in, it's always best to select window systems with low U-value. The solar heat gain coefficient, SHGC, measures how well a product reduces the heat from direct sunlight. It indicates the percentage of solar heat energy or direct radiation that makes its way through the window. SHGC is the fraction of incident solar radiation admitted through a window, both directly transmitted and absorbed and subsequently released inward. The RAT equation is a simple way to remember how SHGC works as it illustrates the factor that make up the solar heat gain coefficient, reflection, absorption and transmittance. SHGC is expressed as a number between 0 and 1, where an SHGC of 0 indicates that no solar heat passes through, so an SHGC of 1 means that 100% of the solar heat passes through. As an example, a window system that has an SHGC of 0.5 indicates that 50% of the solar heat passes through the window system. The lower the SHGC value, the less solar heat is transmitted through the window. 
It's worth noting that the impact of a whole window SHGC value is primarily due to the type of glass selected. U value and R value shouldn't be confused with one another as they're essentially two sides of the same coin. R value is cited when discussing things such as wall and ceiling insulation values but it doesn't translate well to windows and other fenestration products. So Australia uses the international protocol of U values for regulation. The two are inversely related. The higher the R value, the better insulated the walls and ceilings are. The lower the U value, the better job a window does in keeping out the heat and cold. It's vital that during the design build stage for building designers, specifiers and energy assessors to consider the benefits window products with lower U values confer on the overall energy efficiency of a building. This is supported in the compliance path for energy efficiency such as the National Construction Code Glazing Calculator, BASICS and NATO software. If clients ask how a lower U value window will benefit them, they should be advised that by selecting and correctly installing a window with a low U value, the overall building becomes a step closer to optimal thermal comfort as an energy efficient building. As an example, this would mean that consumers are less likely to overuse heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems and other costly means of achieving thermal comfort. However, to gain the greatest benefit given by a well insulated, thermally sound and energy efficient building, designers, builders and their clients should also select other high insulative building components such as high R value rating insulation including BATS. To inform consumers of the potential long term cost saving benefits of selecting energy efficient windows, the Australian Window Association have developed efficient glazing a publicly available online window-to-window -window comparison tool. This tool empowers the community to make the best choices when purchasing efficient windows and doors. It allows a comparison to be made between an original window and a new replacement window, calculating a dollar value for total energy savings and the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. It allows for different house sizes, locations and a variety of window frames and glass. The cost savings will, of course, increase with rising energy prices. Visible transmittance, VT, measures how much light comes in through a window, both directly and as reflected light. It's an optical property that indicates the amount of visible light that's transmitted. VT, like SHGC, is expressed as a number between 0 and 1, with 1 meaning that all the light comes through, a VT of 0.75 means that 75% of light comes through and when the VT is zero, none of the light comes through. If clear glass is replaced with tinted glass, visible light transmittance will be reduced. VT is important because when there is sufficient natural light coming in through windows and doors, interior lights can be turned off to save energy. Low emissivity glass is usually called low E glass or even simply low E. It's a glass that has had a microscopically thin metallic layer applied to one surface. Low emissivity restricts the ability of long wave energy to pass through glass. Examples of long wave energy include the infrared energy from sunlight and the energy emitted by a heater or fireplace during winter. The coating allows short wave energy, such as light, to enter the house but prevents most of the infrared heat energy from entering. This means that it stops heat passing into a room in a hot climate and out of a room in a cool climate. Once this short wave energy enters and hits the house contents, it's turned into longer wave energy, which then can't escape back through the windows. The beneficial characteristics of low E glass make it one of the highest performing options for single glazing and it can be a cost-effective option for warmer climates if utilised with a tint. Insulating glass units IGUs, are commonly called double glazing or triple glazing when there are three layers of glass. They're becoming increasingly common with huge benefit to the insulation levels of a home. Windows are a long-term asset 
and not selecting double glazed windows can potentially limit a home's efficiency for many years. If double glazing is not selected originally, the frame might not be able to accommodate it at a later time, meaning that expensive replacement windows may be needed. Currently, in Australia's southern states, more than 50% of new builds include double glazing. This has resulted in the cost of double glazing in these states dropping to the equivalent of a low-E single glazed window. With building regulations becoming more stringent in terms of energy, the window industry could soon be headed towards the use of triple or even more layered glazed units to achieve the required high energy efficient windows. People often ask if low emissivity, low E glass, is better than double glazing. The short answer to this is no. Low emissivity glass is not better than double glazing. It is, however, better than the generic standard industry typical glass. Double glazing, on the other hand, gives an even better performance for windows. Low emissivity glass can be used in double glazing to achieve even better performance results. Utilising low E glass within an IGU also has the added benefit of sealing the coating within the unit. This protects the low E coating from scratches and harsh chemicals, allowing for a longer life. Another option to consider when selecting insulating glass units is an inert gas fill. The benefit having an inert gas inside the IGU is a lower U value. That's because the gas is much denser than air and therefore minimises the potential for a convection current to form in the gap, as can happen in air-filled double glazing. Those convection currents can carry heat across the space. Additional benefits of insulating glass units include acoustic performance as well as an array of glazing combinations. Now that we've covered the basics of energy performance and glazing technologies, let's run through the impact windows have on building's thermal performance. Building designers and specifiers need to make their client aware of the complex and important considerations for windows when designing and constructing an energy efficient building. These considerations are the climactic conditions of the building location, the orientation, form and layout of the building design, the building materials, the size and location of the windows, shading and the thermal properties of glazing systems. In the book Your Home, it's stated that research shows that 40% of household energy used for heating and cooling to achieve thermal comfort could be cut to almost zero in new housing through sound climate responsive design. This puts emphasis on the need to design for climates, where buildings are designed or modified to ensure that the occupants remain thermally comfortable with minimal additional heating and cooling. In addition, building designers, specifiers and builders should also relay to occupants the impact fixtures and fittings such as awnings, screens and internal honeycomb and metallised blinds can have on the building envelope. Integrating these systems with energy efficient windows and doors can provide maximum benefits. For example, for west facing windows and doors in warmer climate zones, installing external shading such as screens and awnings effectively reduces the SHGC and VT. Worse, the Window Energy Rating Scheme is a voluntary scheme operated and owned by the Australian Window Association. The scheme enables windows to be rated and labelled for their annual energy impact on a whole house in any climate of Australia. It's a credible system for comparing tested energy performance that can be used to select the most appropriate windows and doors that meet the energy requirements of the National Construction Code. These considerations for selecting window products should be analysed as a whole in the initial design phase. However, if a building is not energy efficient, it means that energy is being wasted and thermal comfort will be lacking. This is why it's important to understand and consider these measures of energy performance, as well as the added benefits glazing and window technologies provide to a building design in specific climate zones, locations and orientations. Building designers and builders should encourage their clients to select energy efficient products 
because as the cost of energy usage increases into the future, the beneficial returns on energy efficient products will also increase. This project has been funded by the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage through the Environmental Trust. For more information, visit awa.org.au, wurz.net or efficientglazing.net. Videos on window and door installation are available on the Australian Window Association YouTube channel. Recommended reading is Your Home, Australia's Guide to Environmentally Sustainable Homes that's available to view or download from yourhome.gov.au.